and then I'll share now. We are live. Yes, we're a couple of minutes early. That makes up for being late last time. We'd like to think so. <laughs> We'd like to think that that is the way that that works. Okay, I'm going to see here. It looks like we both, okay, we are live. And it says Tim Bias is watching with me. That's kind of, that's kind of weird. <laughs> so as we are waiting for folks to show up and join us today, um, let, a, let us know when you jump on here that you are here. Say hi in the comments and we'll get started right at 1030. Tim, can you go ahead and say something? I want to check your sound levels and make sure that you're good. I, I can say what I usually say. I can try something different. Um, you'll tell me when you've got the sound level. I'm just glad everybody that, that joins joins today and uh, appreciate the opportunity to, to do this. I think we are good. And I just got a message that we are live now. So that hopefully will help some folks know that we are we are here and they will be joining us. Good morning, Susan. How are you doing this morning? We're going to get started in just a minute. We're going to give folks a couple of minutes to join us here. We hopped on a couple minutes early, as Tim said, to hopefully make, make up for being late last week. Good morning, Nancy. Good to have you with us. Sarah, I need to say that you're speaking to everyone as they join. I don't know who, who's on and who's not, so I don't want people to feel like that I'm not, I'm not very hospitable. <laughs> So I, I, I'm not really, but I don't want them to think that. <laughs> so how this works, and if you're joining us um, right now, let us know that you're here by saying good morning in the comments, and then I can see you and say good morning to you. How this works is I have the ability to see all of the all of the comments, the way that we're um, doing this live, and Tim is streaming into this live via Skype. Um, so that's why he can't see the the comments. He's actually on Skype. I'm using another program via Skype and actually get to to see all of you. Um, so it it looks like we've got a group of people here. Now here's the thing that's fun about this also for me. I can see there's about a dozen of you that are here watching, but I'm only seeing two of you in the comments. So if you're here with us, say hi. <laughs> Just let us know in the comments. We'd like to say hello to you. Um, so as we get started today, and we'll give folks another minute. Good morning, Kevin. Good to have you with us this morning. Hope you are doing well. Um, yeah, Susan, Susan said, just getting started. It was a, a pretty wild night with the storms. Yeah, Tim and I were talking about that as we were getting prepared this morning. Um, I My bedroom window is at a balcony and somehow the rain was hitting my bedroom window. And so it would have to come about eight feet <laughs> to actually hit my bedroom window. And it was a, it was a crazy, crazy night. Good morning, Matt. Good to have you with us. Glad you all are here. And even if it was a, a crazy night with the storm, we are glad to see you this morning and we will jump in here and get started in just a moment. Um, as we're waiting for a few more folks to jump on, Tim, anything that isn't related to what we're going to talk about today that you want to share with folks? <laughs> well, I, I've just been thinking about what we're going to talk about. So as we, um, a, a Wednesday of Holy Week, and I've got to tell you, out of all the years of ministry uh, that I've had, this may be the most a real Holy Week I've ever experienced. Yeah, it, it, the, the word that, and this isn't the, I need to find a different word. The word that I keep using is 
it's just weird. <laughs> it is the weirdest Holy Week I have ever have ever experienced. So as we um, as we get started, part of what I was noticing on Sunday as we were celebrating Palm Sunday was the way that the creativity that was happening with Palm Sunday worship. You know, often in our churches, there's actually, you know, palms and people are either picking up palms as they're coming into worship or exiting worship. There might be um, a palm parade of some sort. And that happened in so many different ways this weekend as I saw it on social media. And some of it was nothing more than a picture of, you know, someone snapping a picture of their kids waving a palm on on their um, on their lawn or putting palm branches on the front door. Um, good morning, Brian. Good to have you with us this morning. So to get us started, we wanted to ask you, how did you celebrate Palm Sunday this year? Because clearly it was different. And Matt, you said it. It was surreal. Um, and as we're waiting for you to to share in the comments. Um, Tim, how did you see the creativity and God's presence on Sunday with Palm Sunday? Well, we may hear about it from somebody who's watching, but um, I participated in a service uh, where people uh, were given palm branches and they drove by the church and honked their horns as they waved their palm branches. I got to tell you what I was thinking was, is that uh, when we read the story in, in uh, Luke's gospel, uh, the religious leaders tell Jesus to tell the people to be quiet. And Jesus says, well, if they're quiet, the very stones will cry out. So I was thinking maybe if somebody told everybody to stop honking their horns, there'd be another way that people would know that, um, that the king is coming, if we can say it that way. Yeah, and this is, this is not Palm Sunday related, but it's... Um related to the the parade and, and the movement of people and and how celebrations are happening that same um, that same parade of cars I have seen happen celebrating birthdays um, people are people are getting creative um, and it doesn't have to it doesn't have to be um, complicated um, Brian said we did a Facebook live Matt said, we focused on the palms of our hands, oh, and use them to represent our personal praise and recognition of the majesty of Christ. Very cool, Matt. Yeah, there were, I don't, I'm not remembering who it was, but someone was asking for folks to take videos of waving, um, <laughs> waving, waving their literal palms. Um, I don't know what they ended up doing with that, but yeah. Um, so as we as we think about this whole week, one of one of the things that I think about every Holy Week, and I think it was Tony Campolo, wasn't it, Tim, who first said it's Friday, but some Sunday's coming, and it was a it was a sermon that he preached. Yes. And and as I've been reflecting on this week this Holy Week and the journey of Jesus to the cross and then resurrection in the midst of this pandemic. Um, it's just, it, it's surreal. Um, and so we thought we'd have a little conversation about um, moving from Friday to Sunday in the midst of this pandemic. And before we, Tim, I'll ask you to get us started there, but before we do, let me share one more, um, one more example from Susan. She said, I sent an email devotion to churches, posted an idea on Facebook um, to hang greens on the front door. So we joined in doing that, watched my sister's church in Colorado online with my children. Wonderful. Thanks for that beautiful example. Yeah, there were lots of everything from um, hanging greens on front door, real live greens, to I also saw folks printing things out on their computer and coloring the, the kids coloring them in. Um, Nancy said we rec we had a recorded message and Mariah and I shared an organ piano duet that we recorded last week. 
Majesty with Shared on Faith United Methodist Canal Winchester's Facebook page. Awesome. Thanks for sharing that example. So we're moving towards Friday. I'm not trying to skip over <laughs> skip over Monday, Thursday, but we're going to for the sake of our, our time together here. Um, Tim, how do you want to get us started with with Good Friday? Well, Sarah, part of what we've been talking about and what we're experiencing is um, is grief. I don't want it to be a, a heavy time, but I, what what other time in the life of the church do we experience grief like Good Friday? Yeah. And so and so uh, what we're experiencing now in everyday life in the in the world in which we live. Uh, there's a heaviness. There, there is grief. And so at part of what I'm thinking about with Good Friday is, um, is just the shock of what's happening. It's, uh, even, I'm, I'm guessing that the people who knew Jesus and gathered around uh, in the garden and with him in prayer when he's arrested, all of that, it was pretty surreal for them. Yeah. Yeah. And, and so our question for you is, how are you seeing grief expressed right now? And you all know that grief isn't always just, it's not just tears. Um, it can be judgment. And that's probably the big one that I'm seeing right now is people just, people being judgy <laughs> and judgmental of, of one another. Um, you know, you're, you're not wearing a face mask. You're, um, you are social distancing, and I don't understand why you're taking this so seriously. Um, you know, you're judging people because they're sad because someone that they love is in um, the hospital and they can't visit them, and so they're sad about that. And you know, and I hear people saying, "Well, but it's what we need to do." And it, I think, what I want. I want folks to hear this morning is everybody's going to be grieving in different ways. And, and those, the ways that whether it's judgment or it's anger, or, you know, think about the five stages of grief, um, bargaining and depression or acceptance. Um, there are still folks that are denying it. And, and all of that, when I think about sitting at the foot of the cross on good Friday, Tim, you said it as we were getting started. This might be the most real Holy Week that we've ever experienced. Uh, Sarah, I, uh, the other thing I'm thinking is that when we talk about the stages or process of grief, it's not a linear kind of thing. So everybody's at a different place at a different time. There are some people who may be in denial. There are other people who are angry. Um, there may be other people who are still trying to bargain their way out of this. I think as we've talked about, even the last time we were uh, live, about the Stockdale uh, paradox, it may very well be that, that where we're moving, uh, we know we'll get to the other side of this, but it's not going to be the way it's always been. And there's grief even in that, uh, that, that we're losing something that we've, that we've had, because when we talk about, well, when things go back to normal, I don't think it's going to be the same old normal. I think it's going to be a new normal. Yeah, and and I'll share something on Friday that will hopefully help us to, to look at that as well. Matt said, um, I've especially heard people judging over not having Easter worship services <laughs> until pastors started getting arrested for holding services. <laughs> Yeah, and, and I've also seen bargaining on that one. Well, can't we just try and do, <laughs> can't we just try and get together just for Easter because, because it's Easter? No, you're, we're still going to put one another at risk. And, and I think that's going to be happening for, for a long time. Um, so yeah, as we, as we come to Good Friday and as uh, I was reading the, the scriptures again this morning and as you read that text, there's there's something very surreal about what we are experiencing right now. Um, that 
so many of the emotions, I'm seeing parallels between either how it's expressed in scripture or how I imagine the disciples and um, the people in Jesus' inner circle may have, may have responded. Um, so you want to move on to Saturday? Let's, let's <laughs> move, move, move out of grief into um, the, well, I'll say it this way on, on Facebook Live, the SFDs. Um, and I'll call it a stormy first draft. On, on Saturday, there's silence, right? There, there's questioning. What just happened? What's going on? Um, and it's, it's where we, in that moment, we start to ask the questions. And what I'm talking about when I talk about the, the stormy first draft, and I think we're also sitting on Saturday in the midst of what we're experiencing right now is that we're writing a story and sometimes that story is is a lie that is honestly told and it's a confabulation we don't we're not intending to be untruthful but it's it's how we're making sense of it right now and yet <laughs> it's really not true um, and so the, the confabulations that are being created, um, I'm trying to think of, of one, and maybe you all who are here with us um, can, well, maybe, Tim, you just said one, that things are going to go back to normal. Uh, no. <laughs> well, it's not going to go back the way we've always had it. Um, and... And, and I, I think part of Saturday, Saturday if, if I'm, I'm just trying to put myself in place of the disciples, disciples which then allows us to think about where we are today, and that is, I'm guessing the disciples sat around and said, you know, if we had done this, maybe this wouldn't have happened. Yeah. Or, or if we had done this, uh, something else might have been. Or they're sitting there saying, you know, I didn't speak up when I should have spoken up, and I should have. I think, I think that's, that's part, part of what goes on on Saturday. I, I know it's quiet. I know it's a time where we um, where we step back and we're reflecting. But much of that reflection, I'm guessing, even in a time like this, is that we're thinking, what what could we do differently that would not have caused this? And then because we're in this grief thing, we start uh, one of the things that we've talked a lot about. I think is we start blaming one another. Um, if so-and-so had done this, we wouldn't have been here. If so-and-so had done this, we wouldn't have been here. And, you know, there may be some truth in all of that, but where we are right now, and this is the other part that's so tough for Saturday, for, for Friday, Saturday, is that we don't have any control over it right now. And that's really the painful and maybe the grief part of it as well. Yeah, well, well said. Well said. Um, anything more that you want to offer there? No, I, I think, think I wasted. Uh, I, I think, think I've already ruined, ruined Saturday. Saturday. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, no, you didn't. As as you were talking, part of what I I think I've always imagined Saturday as silent, but as you were silent and quiet and and reflective. But as you were talking, part of what I was thinking about is. The way that, the way that I've seen and experienced some people experience grief, is that they get really busy, and that they start, um, they start trying to do things and trying to fix it, and, and it, it's that questioning and bargaining that you were talking about, and the blaming of well, if he would have done something, or you must not have loved Jesus as much as as I did because I you're not even sad right now. Um, yeah. Um, Brian said, if everyone stays in their cars with the windows rolled up, maybe having their cars decorated with the Easter message, still doing services on Facebook Live as well, what would be the downside of inviting people to come to the church parking lot for a live Easter service? Tim, I don't know if you've got an, an answer for Brian. Brian, I don't, I don't know that there is a downside. Part of what I... I um, 
one, I think there's a technology piece. How do people hear that? And the folks that I, how do they hear the message? The folks that I know that are doing that, I believe are doing that through a radio broadcast. And so um, somebody has a shortwave radio that they're, that they're broadcasting and everybody's tuning their radios, just like you would go to a drive-in movie and be able to, to hear it. Um, the part that, that concerns me about coming together in that way, Brian, is that I think it's going to have a, be a very hard thing because we are distancing ourselves right now for people not to get out of their cars and for people not to, to interact with one another. And so how, and we don't have, we don't have any control over that. All that we can do is encourage people to do that, but it only takes one person getting out of their car and, and we're creating a problem. Um, it, it's a wonderful idea if you can execute it well. <laughs> um, and, and I think some, I think some people are, there's some technology that's involved in that, that honestly, I'm not familiar with, um, to make that happen. But what I think about is, how, how do you keep people staying away and staying in their cars? Um, you know, the image that comes to my mind is there, I, I only did this a couple of times, but when traveling with teenagers as a youth pastor and putting tape on their doors so that you knew if they left, <laughs> if they left the room, um, you know, you can't go around to people's cars and put tape on, I suppose you could, but I'm not sure what good it would do. Um, going around to their cars and putting tape on it so you know that they don't get get out. Um, yeah, Paul said, the stay-at-home order means just that, to stay at home. In Illinois, the coming together creates risks and violates both the spirit and the letter of the order. Very well said, Paul. Thank you for concisely saying, concise, saying that. Um, yeah, it, but it's hard, to, it's hard to stay away. So anything you want to offer on that one, Tim? I, uh, Sarah, Sarah, I think, think what, what we, we have to keep in mind is why we're doing this. this. Uh, it, it doesn't, doesn't take, take away. The resurrection is going to happen whether we're, we're in the parking lot, lot or in the sanctuary. sanctuary. Uh, we're, we're celebrating uh, God's yes to us in the midst of all the no's. And so uh, I, I don't think we have to be uh, present. What's, What's really, really important, though, is that uh, because, because of the, uh, the seriousness of the, of the crisis, we, we do have to stay um, physically distancing from each other. We, we can, can still make connection in other ways. Um, and, it, and I agree with you, it's tough if, if people do get together. Uh, and when have you ever had a worship service where you're not trying to receive an offering? How do you do this without having some kind of contact? Um, I, I, I do, do like, like the idea, idea whether, I, whether I agree or not, uh, theologically, I like the idea of celebrating Holy Communion, but, but the people bring their own elements. You're, you're not, not passing out anything, anything. You're you're not, not, but but people, uh, and if you're doing it online or even, I know of some who are doing it uh, in the neighborhood or in the parking lot, but the people have to bring their own elements to do it. I mean, I mean that's, that's, that, that seems, seems so crazy, crazy and it does not seem uh, theologically uh, correct. But, but I think, um, as we've talked before, just being curious, asking questions, finding ways. Uh, one, one of the things, things we've talked about is just having, uh, uh, having the agency of being, being able to get around the barriers to get to what we really want to do. And, um, uh, and that's really a, a, a cycle of hope. And if, if there's not, if, if there's anything that we're celebrating uh, at Holy Week and Easter, it's hope. hope. And, and we're, we're able to get around those barriers. It, it doesn't have to be perfect, and it doesn't have to be the way it's always been. But we know the God that we are following through Jesus, and there's nothing, absolutely nothing, that can separate us from that. I think Tim might start preaching. What do you think, folks? Give me give me a thumbs up in the in the comments or on, on, on the like button if you think that he might be preaching. And that's that's our so that's the last question. What's the hope you're counting on? Yeah, you know, as Tim just said, 
the risen Christ, we're still going to celebrate that wherever we're at on Sunday. We will continue to celebrate the risen Christ and that, you know what? The tomb's empty. <laughs> Doesn't matter where, where we are at. And, and that is, as we, turn, as we turn the corner to Easter, um, Tim, you were just alluding to the, to the hope cycle and, and focusing on the hope that we have in Jesus I think that's what I'm seeing people reach out to the church for. And, and, and folks are looking for that. They're looking for that spiritual leadership right now to name that hope. And it's going to require the creativity to be able to move around the barriers that we have in our way. We can't be together right now. Okay, so how do we do this? We do silly things like Facebook Lives now. There's nothing silly about it. But, um, yeah, so I, I'm looking forward to Easter. It's going to be different. But I'm looking forward to being able to share the message of hope and the promise of the resurrection that as Easter people, we live with and we proclaim, even in the midst of a really hard time, for all of us. Even when it's hard, it doesn't mean that you can't have hope. And I think that's what Jesus tells us over and over and over again. Even when it's difficult, I'm with you. Even when it feels like Friday, I'm with you. And, and there will be a new story that gets written. There's new life that is coming. Now I'm starting to preach. So I'll, I'll pause. Um, let, me, let me jump over here to the comments. And Tim, you jump in here and um, offer, offer your thoughts. Um, Paul said, I hope you would start preaching. <laughs> um, I, I, um, uh, not, not, not because, because Paul, Paul just said that. that. Let, let, me, let, me let me say this, this though. In, in Mark's, Mark's gospel, uh, when, when the, the women come, come to the tomb, and I like your idea of being busy, I, they're already making arrangements to do something because they're going to take care of the body. Right. And they, they, they come, come on Sunday. Sunday uh, Leave it to the Sunday, women. Sorry. Sunday Sunday Monday. Monday. Well, they're, they're <laughs> the first ones. They're, they're the ones who uh, have the first story uh, in every gospel. So, so they're, they're, they're the, the ones. Yeah. Uh, but, but the, uh, the, the thing, thing that, that I'm thinking of at that point is, is that in Mark's gospel, once, once they see the tombs empty, once they're on the other side of all this stuff that's surreal, they, they have another shock. And, and that shock is, he's, he's not here. here. Right. Right. But now, now I'm thinking, thinking, and I'm thinking, and all of us would say the same thing, thing. Well, we, we, we need, need to go tell somebody. But well, what, what do they, they do? do? They, they don't, don't tell, tell anyone. anyone. <laughs> right. It's, it's such a it's such a, 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 a an overwhelming experience that, that they don't say anything to anyone. anyone. And, and I'm, I'm thinking maybe what Mark's uh, saying to his community is, it's, it's time for you to tell the story. story. It's, it's a it's a new story. story. Uh, uh, they, they don't, don't say anyone, anyone but, but when they, they do speak, speak you're going to listen to them. them. Because, because they, they have, have something, something to say to you so that you can tell the story. And, and in, in the midst of this, we already know, like at 9-11, and this isn't just with my idea, it was I heard this, uh, that we had, do you remember what it was like to go to an airport before 9-11? Yeah. And what it's like to go now? And we're going to have these conversations about this, um, about this virus. Do you remember what it was like before COVID-19? But, but, but the, the resurrection, resurrection still happens. happens. Right. There's, There's still, still hope. hope. Right. Okay. And, and, that, and Kevin said, I see hope and that the coronavirus does not stop spring from coming and new life is popping up all around us. Absolutely. And then Matt offered that we're looking with anticipation towards the resurrection of public worship. Amen. Um, and Susan offered... Um, looking forward to this Sunday. Easter is a reality, not just something we do. This year, will be that will be more evident than ever. Looking forward to the past, sometimes we can't have have or do something. We cherish it more than when we can. 
So the long term, it would be for people to cherish that they have what they have so they embrace it and share the gift they have. Yeah, I, in in talking with a couple of my closest friends, I, you know, bantering back and forth about, well, what, you know, what's, what will happen when we can come back to worship? And Susan, you just hit on what I, I said as well. I think people are going to appreciate the fact that we can be together as, as folks who live in the United States who have not experienced for the most part the inability to gather to do things i i think there's going to be a greater appreciation when when we can come together um so that's that's all the comments that we have we're approaching 11 o'clock um and we wanted to keep these under under 30 minutes so as Tim and I record the podcast every week, you don't always hear this on the podcast, but part of what I always say to him is, Tim, do you have any final thoughts? I'm going to invite you to, to give your final thoughts and, and pray for us um, as we um, conclude our, our time together. Let me remind you before Tim prays for us that um, there is a devotional that is available for you on the Transforming Mission website that will come to you every morning at 5 a.m. Um, and I continue to give God thanks for all of the people who have contributed to that and who are helping to make that happen. So, I, I think, think, Sarah, Sarah before, before I pray, what, what, the, the only thing I'd, I'd like, like to say is, is that I am really grateful and, and, and proud. proud. I'm, I'm grateful, grateful for and proud of the pastors and leaders uh, for, for whom we have responsibility, responsibility for how they have stepped up and been leading in the midst of this. There's, there's nothing about it that's easy. Regardless of, of what you were doing before, um, I, I, I got I to gotta tell you, um, just my confession, uh, I prepared a sermon for this last Sunday. And uh, for the first time, I'm doing it in this medium. Uh, the, the way, way we're, we're doing, doing it now, uh, uh, preparing it to send it off for, for somebody to have, and, and it wore me out. So, so I have a great appreciation <laughs> for all of you who are doing this work uh, in a different way. Pace yourselves, take a deep breath, take the next step, um, because, because Sunday is coming. So on that note, before you pray, we'll, we'll be back next week. Tim and I haven't talked about if it's going to be Wednesday or Friday. So watch your email for that indication and watch Facebook for when that will be. But we will definitely be back next week. And that's exactly what we want to talk about next week is being kind to yourself or as I started titling it, resurrection kindness. What, it, what does that look like and how can, how can we do that um, for ourselves and for the people that we live with um, and and are around us, even as we're keeping that distance from one another and staying home. Um, there are ways that, that we can do that and, and be present to one another and share the love of Jesus. So, Tim, will you pray for us? And that will end our time together. Again, Again for, for the goodness, goodness of the day, day for, for your grace that abounds, abounds for your love, love that never lets us go, we're, we're grateful. grateful. And, and we're, we're grateful, grateful today, today that you have reminded us that no matter what situation or circumstance that we're in, no matter how confusing or even how painful, uh, there is a time in which you surround us with that love that never lets us go, and we can trust what happens tomorrow to be the new day in which you have created for us. Thank, Thank you, you for this privilege as we offer ourselves and, and as I offer all of my uh, colleagues to you that, that over these days, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, that, that there be days in which we're reminded of your great love for us in Jesus. We offer ourselves to you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Know that our prayers continue for each and every one of you as you continue to journey through Holy Week, and we'll see you as we celebrate the resurrection. Bye for now.